Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to this week's live stream right here in the Make More Placements community for recruitment and search business owners. Um, today we're going to be talking about the number one mindset block that causes recruitment and search business owners to get stuck and struggle to grow and how to shift it. We can get started in about 30 seconds or so. Um, again, if you can if you can see and hear it's okay, if everything's working, just let us know, give us a like, comment in the uh Obviously, in the comment, in the comment box, so we know everything is working. Awesome. Good so, morning, good afternoon. Hi. Good morning. So, good awesome. afternoon if you're in mainland Europe and UK. Good morning if you're in in North America, Canada, etc. And, and welcome. And we're here every week at the same time at 1500 UK time, which is about we're well, not about. It is 10 a.m. New York time and 4 p.m. mainland Europe. And welcome. Perfect. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about the number one mindset block that causes recruitment and search business owners to get stuck and struggle to grow and how to fix it. So, um, yeah, on, on the topic of mindset in general, um, it's something that we don't really, you know, we have a program called Apex where we help recruitment and search business owners make more placements for higher fees with less work and fewer headaches. And, and, and a big part of that program, we spend a big chunk of the time looking at the mindset that you need to have in order to achieve your goals because what we found is that you know you can have you can be you can have the same access to the same tools have the same skill set same experience as another recruiter another person in the niche but the, 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 the one of the big deciding factors in the results you get isn't about the actions you take it isn't just about the actions you take it's about how you think how you you know what your beliefs are what your mindset is. And I think, you know, we all know if you've worked in recruitment even a you know a short amount of time, I think one of the things that you need to have right, and you see consultants come and go, um, is, is you need to be resilient, you need to have that mindset, otherwise it's going to be a struggle for you because you know you're gonna have good days and you, you, you're, you're certainly gonna have bad days. So if you're not able to deal with that, navigate through that, um, it's gonna be, be really difficult for you to achieve what you want to achieve. So mindset is very, very important. Um, but also, like, you know, that's that's at sort of the, I guess, entry level. But even like we see with um, more experienced recruitment and search business owners, one of the biggest sort of roadblocks or things that get in their way when it comes to growth, I'm talking about some really, really successful people, is, 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 is mindset and the shift that needs to happen before they can achieve the results they want. And, you know, we've, uh, I guess, spoke about this for years, sort of, with our clients, but we never really sort of spoke about it publicly because people don't really want mindset, we found. People want the tactics, they want the strategies, they want the techniques, they want the ninja tricks that's going to get them clients and going to get them more, more business. But we're going to sort of switch up there and talk about what goes behind that. And if there's one sort of word that we can use to describe like the, the mindset or the, or the potential blockage that you could have in your mindset, it's the word of, you know, the word is ego. Ego essentially means about like how you view yourself. And let me dig into you know what that means and you know, how that can potentially be showing up in your business and day-to-day -day life now, stopping you getting the results you want. Before we jump into that, Terry, anything anything you'd add? Yeah, I think one of the best descriptions I, I had about ego is to view your ego almost like a an overprotective parent. And as an overprotective parent, imagine you know you're you're a child and you've got an overprotective parent, and they're gonna say things like, don't go outside. Um, unless you wrap up warm, uh, don't don't play on that bicycle because you may fall off and, and graze your knee. Uh, don't climb that tree because that's dangerous. But your ego is like that overprotective parent that's doing its utmost to protect you. So the intentions generally are good in terms of the intention, but they may not serve you because you because you appreciate if you've got that overprotective parent that's stopping the child from learning to play and stopping the child from falling over and maybe grazing their knee or whatever long term it's not actually serving them and for you to achieve what you want to achieve you have to step outside your current comfort zone and step into the unknown but your ego will do its utmost to keep you in that comfort zone and many a lot of the time it's unconscious as well it's not a, it's, not, it's not something that's happening con consciously but unconsciously but think about it wherever you are now for you to get to the next level, let's say you want to scale your business. Without doubt, you're going to have to step outside your current comfort zones and step into something that you don't know. Your ego will then 
give you all the reasons why you shouldn't do that. And we're going to come to some of those now. Come to those now. And you're going to behave in such a way to protect yourself. And whenever you see people behaving in a certain way, and we've all experienced it, we're going to give some examples a bit later on. That's their ego trying to protect them. You know, so the person that that wants to sh tell you how wealthy they are, or the person that wants to tell you about the car that they drive, or anything like that. There's something going on that they feel that's important that you know that, but that's to protect themselves. And you just you just need to appreciate what's going on there. Does that make sense, Ru? It does. And just to be clear, ego in of itself isn't a, a bad thing. But I think, you know, what I want to get across is that a whole sense of ego is a, is a bad thing and can be your enemy when it comes to growing your business. And, you know, before, literally 10 minutes before this call, for this stream, um, I wanted to sort of, I've done a quick Google search to find, you know, I guess a description that may put it across more eloquently than, than, than I, I could and certainly more than Terry could. And my family, I, how did I know that was good? <laughs> <laughs> what I found was this one, I'm just going to read it out. It says, one of the biggest reasons why ego is the enemy is that it keeps you out of touch with, rea re with reality. Your ego is what prevents you from hearing critical but necessary feedback from others. Ego makes you overestimate your own abilities and worth and underestimate the effort and skill required to achieve your goals. So again, so I'm going to read that last bit. Again, ego makes you overestimate your own abilities and worth and underestimate the effort and skill required to achieve your goals and i think for me I, 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 you know everyone everyone has ego so it's not it's not sort of you know it's a problem we have problem everyone everyone has it's not unique to you or your situation it just presents itself in, in different ways and i think often it can be confused with confidence i think there's a, a very fine line between the two and i think for you to be a successful recruitment or search business owner or even just as a consultant you need to have that confidence. You need to believe in your own ability. You need to back yourself, quite frankly. And you, and you, and you need that. But the, the difference between the two is like, you know, if, if confidence is, you know, believing in your abilities, um, ego is almost like, you know, believing that you're so good that you can't improve further. Terry, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And, you know, some of the language, we, you know, Drew and I are fortunate. We talk to recruitment and search business owners every day of the week. And, and it still, it always becomes, it quickly becomes apparent when the ego is getting in the way of, 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 a, of, of a business owner. And it's, it's probably what's stopping them from, from getting, getting to the next level, you know. And you'll hear things like, yeah, um, exactly, here's a good classic example. Uh, people in my market won't pay that price, uh, as an example, or won't pay a higher fee. And that's a very sweeping generalization. And what they're saying is that whatever their fee is, that has got to be, uh, that, that's a going rate for, for, the, for their market. Well, amongst other things, they don't actually know for sure because they haven't spoken to every single recruiter in their market. And what they know is at a level intellectually that there are some recruiters out there right now who are charging a higher fee and getting business. But your ego is doing everything it can to protect you. And if you acknowledge that, you're saying, well, actually, if somebody else can do it, then surely I can. But your ego will have to put forward the argument, well, that's a going rate, you know, Nobody in my market pays over 20% or 10% or whatever it is, whatever the, your story is on that. And one of the reasons we're talking about this is just to acknowledge, to help you acknowledge what's going on. Because the moment you get this, it, I promise you it's a game changer. When you acknowledge, actually, this is, you know, we're using the term ego. Um, quite frankly, it's your own BS that's getting in the way. The, the moment you can acknowledge that, it's the moment you can do something about it. And, and, and let, unless you can acknowledge that, nothing changes. And if nothing changes, you're going to keep doing what you're doing. And you're going to keep getting the same results. But it's the moment that you go, actually, this is my BS. This is my ego getting in the way here. How would it be for me if I was to think differently about this? What impact did it have on me? And it's one of the key reasons we were really keen to share with this with you. Because the guys that have had the biggest breakthroughs are those guys that are acknowledged and got, got, got out of their own way, ultimately. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the sort of, um, I guess, analogies that I like to use when talking about this is, 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 is you know, an athlete or sports, but people, people tend to get that world, right? So it's, it's a bit like, you know, think of your, you know, your favourite sports star, Michael Jordan, uh, Tiger Woods, uh, Beckham, Messi, it's, it's almost like them believing that they're so good that they don't need to go to training anymore. They don't need to practice, they don't need to coach, they don't need to review their game tapes. And this, you know, I think probably anyone that's played sport uh, at a younger age has probably met or seen someone who was good enough had the talent to be able to make it professional professional 
But because their ego got in the way, they stopped training, maybe stopped watching their diet, started drinking and, and, and didn't make it. And the same thing can happen to you in your, in your business. And it's not necessarily, we're not talking about the difference between success and failure here. Really. Like, I'm not talking about you having you know, no business or, or having a business you want. It, 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 it can be a very subtle difference between you doing really well you know, well into six figures to you getting that, you know, the actual lifestyle, the actual business that you want. So I just want to sort of jump into six ways that, uh, and again, it's a subject we could talk about forever, really, but I, I wanted to sort of dial down into six ways where, uh, six common ways where I think it might be presenting itself in your business right now. Um, and all we do is, again, look out, listen, look out for it. If any are, are, are presenting itself, you give us a like, let us know. Um, but yeah, just 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 give us your, your your feedback. So number one, number one, first way that ego shows up in your business is being complacent in your mission. So being complacent in your mission. So you know Terry touched on this before, but you know you presumably have um, you know a business goal that you want to reach a, a revenue target, a certain number of clients, certain team size, whatever it happens to be for you. You you you've got that idea in your head of the business that you want to build the lifestyle that you want to uh, have off the back of that business but what what we find is again ego gets in the way and we get complacent in our mission so like I used an analogy a minute ago of the um athlete or, or professional footballer basketball player whatever not trained or you know think of your, your favorite sports team imagine they're not reviewing game tapes after they perform or not optimizing their current process the same goes for your business as well so what people do is and again this is this is probably like harder to spot the more successful you are because you you have a process that works right you've if you, even if you've got just one client you've got a process that works for winning clients or winning business or delivering or marketing sales whatever it doesn't matter where the process is you've got a process that works and what we do is because it works we get complacent with it we allow it to keep working and it doesn't again i'm not saying it doesn't work but we neglect the opportunity to optimize and improve Terry, anything you'd add to that? Yeah, I think one of the common things here that we sometimes get with some guys is uh, they will say something like, um, Terry, you know, great talking to you, but what can you teach me about um, uh, executive search or recruitment or lead generation? And I've been doing this for, I've been doing this for 12 years, as an example. And what they're saying is that they've got quite complacent. I've, I've been doing this for 12 years, or whatever the number is. And at some level, they're saying, there is nothing more I can learn about it. Now you'll talk to another recruiter and say, hell, I've been doing this for 15 years and I'm learning every day of the week. But one of our clients, Don, I won't give his surname. I think he's been in the industry 22 years and he said something today, didn't he? He said, every week I'm learning something new uh, about how to generate leads um, and, and how to get more business uh, in, my, in my search firm. But can you see the difference in that? One individual saying, I've been doing this for X number of years and what can you teach me? Another person saying, I've been mean, it's twice as long and I'm and I'm and I'm learning all the time. Um, so th that's that, that's just one example. Another and how that manifests itself then is that uh, there are some recruiters out there, and you probably know them, who will read and are constantly looking to improve their performance, are constantly looking at different forms of 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 of, uh, of, of, of improving. Which would be the second thing, really, not training, not being open to the possibility that there's room for improvement. Um, and you know, and imagine your 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 favorite sports person, um, and you heard that they thought they were too good that they didn't need to train anymore, they didn't need to practice, they didn't need to get any better. I mean, straight away your opinion of them is is, is going to diminish. Well, let me ask you a question: How much are you investing in your own training? How much are you investing in, in that of your organisation in terms of training and development? Because there is no difference. You see, even the, the, the Drew talked about the top sports people. If they're if they're not working on this, uh, they're not growing. They're, they're going to decline. Well, very much the same thing is going to happen happen to you. What's the implications if your competitors are constantly working and training and developing themselves, but you're not? Because at some level, your ego is saying there is nothing else I need to learn about this. I know it all. So it's a classic example of your ego getting in the way. And part of that is, by the way, is having to acknowledge that you don't know it all. And part of it, you know, again, this is the ego showing your vulnerability. Actually, I don't know it all. And your ego will do its utmost to protect, protect you from showing any vulnerability on your part. Does that make sense, Drew? 
Okay. So number one is being complacent in the mission. Number two is not asking for help or wanting to figure it out on your own. So not asking for help or wanting to figure out figure it out on your own. So those, those of you with uh, kids or, you know, you may, you may remember from, from when you were younger, like it's, it's, it's common in, in teenagers to have this, to, to display ego in this way where, you know, you can see them making a mistake or doing making a choice that's going to, you know, be painful for them in the future. But, you know, they, they don't want to listen to you. They don't want to, they don't want to ask for help, they don't want to listen to you, don't want to take your advice, and you, know, you sort of have to let them make the mistake. But the same thing happens with, with, with business owners, right? Uh, again, time and time again, we speak to recruiters and service owners, you know, all, pretty much all day long, right? Whether it's you know, in Messenger or on the phone or whatever in our in our with our clients. And time and time again, you you'll meet someone who's been struggling in a particular area for so long and didn't do anything didn't reach out for help to try and fix it. And, and again, this could sound like, this one can sound almost self-serving because it's almost like, oh, you should you should reach out to us to help you. That's not what I'm saying. You know, of course you're welcome to do that, but there's lots of people you can learn from, um, you know, when it comes to growing your recruitment business in, in different aspects and people have the different areas where, they're, where they, they specialize, right? But I'm, I'm just saying like, if you're stuck in an area, if there's something that's not working right in your business right now, you've got two choices. One is to figure it out on your own keep making mistakes, keep doing the trial and error. The other is to ask ask or seek information of the, of, of the solution and get the fix handed to you. To you. Um, sorry, but again, just before I go jump Terry, like people want to, you know, and often this in the past as well, you want, you almost want the pain of figuring it out for yourself. Yeah, I think the other thing though, I kind of touched on it earlier, is about if you have to ask for help, um, uh, some people will consider that a sign of weakness. And again, that's your ego wanting to protect you. You're not weak. You're strong. So don't you go asking for help because you 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 know you know exactly what to do. But it's quite the opposite. Of that it's true. The very fact that you're going to nod and say, actually, I don't know at all. Actually, for the last X Y Z years, we've been doing it this way, and for the last X Y Z years, we've we've been at this revenue for a number of years now, give or take twenty or thirty thousand. Um, clearly, if we keep doing this, we're going to kind of stay here. That's when you're going to have the breakthrough. That's when you can put your ego to a side and say, actually, I, I get ego or protective parent. You're trying to protect me now, but I, I need to get out of this. I need to increase my sales. And the guys that haven't got that, that, that particular uh, ego get, getting in the way, they're the ones that are going to ask questions. They're the ones that are going to uh, look at doing things better than they've ever done them before. And they're the ones that are going to enjoy the success. And it's, it's, it almost sounds too, too good to be true, but it really is a case of what's getting in your way and stopping you from for, for asking for help. Do you think it's a sign of weakness? Do you think you should know everything? Again, remember I said earlier, you know, we called it uh, uh, ego. Uh, and I said, quite frankly, uh, the, the cruder term and probably more apt term is, is your BS getting in the way? Of course you don't know it all. Of course there's somebody out there that can help you. If you're open to the possibility of having that conversation with somebody. So not, not wanting to ask for help. The third one is, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, ooh, three, yeah, yeah, about four weeks ago, I spoke to somebody, um, and they're at they are my words out. They are at two hundred and fifty thousand a year, uh, US, and they actually want to get to four times that, and they want to get to a million, and they're they're a solo recruiter. Now that's possible. We work with guys, the solo recruiters, who are doing that. However, at the moment, their average placement fee is i think it was uh 10,000 was it was the average placement fee but they want to, their goal is is to get to a million so we talked about some things that they could do about getting to a million and one of the things that we asked them to consider was perhaps recruiting at a more senior level perhaps uh, uh increasing their fee and kind of doing things differently and they resisted that their ego was saying no 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 i want i want to get to a million as a solo recruiter on on on, on the way that i'm doing it now but think about that for a minute. For them to get to where they want to get to, they would have had to make eight placements a month, every month, as a solo recruiter, because they were more attached to the how than the what. They were more attached to, this is the way I'll do things. Here's a common one. We've always done it this way. Well, if you've always done it that way and it's got, got you so far, if you want to get to the next level, pretty fair to say, you're going to have to do them differently because you know, asking any solo recruiter to make eight placements a, a month, every single month, is a massive, not massive, it's, it's damn right impossible 
to do that on, on a regular and consistent basis. But they would argue, there's another, by the way, argue for their limitations. That's another exciting example of your ego get, get in the way when you argue for, for limitations. So they constantly argued as to why they wanted to keep doing it the way that they're doing it now that was never going to work. So they're more attached to the how than to the to the what. Does that, does that make sense, Drew? Yeah, it does. And, you know, listen to this, you've probably got your goal in your head of what you want to want, want to achieve. And you probably, get through experience, you've probably got an idea of how you're going to get there as well. You've got, the, you know, an, an idea of that. And nothing wrong with having a plan and, you know, knowing how you're going to get to where you want to get to. But there, there always comes a point, not to say always comes a point, there often comes a point where that plan isn't working or it's not working as quickly as you want. And because your ego gets in the way, your stubbornness says, no, I need to stick to this plan uh, because this is, this is the way I want to do it. This is the how I want to do it, right? So it's about being more attached to that than, than the what. You know, sometimes there's an easier way, there's a quicker way, there's a more simple way to get to where you want to get to. But in order to do that, you have to let go of the how and be prepared to, you know, I guess, you know, if we're going to sort of frame some more words, it's, it, it's like, are you prepared to do whatever it takes? You know, assuming it's sort of ethical and morally, morally right, are you willing to do whatever it takes? People often say the answer is yes, but when you look at the actions, the answer is no, they're not willing to do whatever it takes because their ego gets in the way. Yeah, and just, just very quickly on that, Drew, another example of the ego, I don't think we kind of talk about this, is, is I, I mean, I just gave an example, I often get this. We, we work with quite a few guys, a solo recruiters who will do a million a year, a million, um, just over a million a year, let's say uh, a, a US dollars. And when you say that to people, one of the first questions they ask is, yeah, but what niche do they operate in? And you give them, and by the way, it's regards to whatever niche you're working. They say, yeah, they're doing a million, let's say in IT or construction, but you couldn't do that as a solo recruiter in my niche. You need to understand that's your ego getting in the way. Because at one level, if, if that wasn't the case, you're saying, well, if somebody else can do it, why can't I do it? But your ego will say, well, yeah, the reason they're doing a million and whatever market they're operating is because they're operating in that market. Or the other one that makes always makes a smile. Yeah, but the Americans can do a million a year, but you could never do that in the UK. Again, it's all a bit... We've got we've got UK clients, solar recruiters who would do a million a year. We've got we've got uh, US clients who would do just over a million a year. It's got nothing to do with the location, but it has everything to do with your ego and what you believe is, is, is possible. I just thought I'd, I just thought I'd throw that in there because it's, it's yeah. I'm aware as I talked about the solar recruiter doing a million a year. Some people are going, yeah, but that's always a sign, by the way. Yeah, but they're based in Europe or they're based in North just, America. Just to add to that as well, I think, you know, in today's day and age, you can target wherever you're based, you can target clients wherever you want, um, mm. you can work in whatever sector you want. So, again, we always we almost use that as an excuse, like always, because they're, and again, I've, I've done it as well. Like, oh, that's because they're in their market or because they're working with clients like this, as if you can also do that. It's, uh, again, it's eager getting away. Um, so, yeah. yeah, number four, number four is saying that won't work. Well, that won't work with my clients, that won't work in my market without even even testing it. So, again, this is a common one. Again, something that I've done as well. You hear an idea or you see an idea, you see someone doing something, and it could be around the way they're attracting clients, could be the marketing, could be the sales process, or maybe it could be around retainers or exclusivity or, or, or a certain fee. And you look at it and you hear the advice or you see someone doing anything, you know, that's all well and good, but you, you know, sort of touched on what Terry said there. That won't work in my market because you give yourself some reason. But and again, I think if you've tested it and you and you've tried it, there's some some validity. That that's you know part of that statement is valid, right? But I think often you hear that, and what we do is, as as business owners, as people, we make assumption assumptions based on nothing but our, our past experience, right? So often you speak to a recruiter and you say, you know, let's say exclusivity, for example. Oh, my clients won't, won't, won't go down the exclusive route. Have you ever asked them? No, no, but I've never, I've never wanted exclusive assignment before. Yeah, but you're not, you're not asking. So you, you, you create this picture of what your future may look like because of the activity you've done in your past, and you're not even prepared to test. So you know, it, 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 I, 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 I personally think like all of business growth, anyway, marketing, sales is about testing, finding out what doesn't work as much as it is finding out what what does work. So sometimes. We need to test, we need to be prepared to fail, get things wrong in order to find the right path. And if you're not, you know, we're so uh, sure of ourselves that we can say, you know, without knowing, without testing that, you know, that thing won't work, whatever it happens to be, that method won't work without testing it. Again, that's a sign that your ego is getting in the way. Is there anything you'd add to that? 
No, I think you've, you've summed it up really well. That yeah, yeah, uh, that won't work in my market. You know, why don't you put your, why don't you put your fees up? Yeah, but not in, not in my market. Why don't you recruit at a more level, high, more senior level? Yeah, but not in, yeah, it's, yeah. And it, I find it quite sad actually uh, when they say that. As, as you, the great example you give there. Have you ever tried that? No, but I just don't think it'll work. So it's it's. I find it very sad because I, well, the reason I find it sad is because there are other people who go, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm not sure whether it's going to work, but I'm, at the very least, I'm going to test it. And of course, they test it, they get results. And the person that says, "Oh no, I'm not, I'm not going to try it," I find it very sad when they say that. Yeah, that's one of my. Oh, that's a real pity. Yeah. Um, so that's the fourth one. The fifth one is saying, "This always makes me smile." Yeah, I know that already. Because here's the thing: it's not the knowing, it's the doing. I can almost guarantee, as you're listening to this right now, you know that you should drink two liters of water a day and should eat, I think it's five portions of fruit a day, every day. Majority of people don't do that. You saying, I know that, but not doing it, is kind of pointless because it's not about the knowing. It's about the doing. Of course, you know, there are several ways of, a client, uh, of attracting uh, 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 clients, but how many of you are doing those ways? I think you know this, there's over a hundred different ways that you as a recruitment to search for man, they can generate uh, in, inquiries and, and, and attract clients over a hundred most will use four or five most recruiters will use four or five and when you say did you know you could do x y z it yeah i know that are you doing it no yeah, it's, a, it's, it's gone Drew, go on. no, take it further it's not even about doing it it's about doing it properly yeah then you hear people say um no again go back to the creativity thing they'll say well yeah i have I, yeah i have asked for this didn't win any therefore you can't do it on market Again, it's not just about doing it, it's about doing it properly. There's a way to do everything in, in your business, right? There's, there's ways that work better. You know, we need to, you know, it's good to try, but even when something doesn't work the first time, we have to optimize, we have to find out why it didn't work and see how we can see how we can improve it. So it's not just about knowing, and it's not even just about doing, it's about doing it properly. So if something mm. that you're doing isn't getting you the results you want, but it is for other people, then there's a good chance that you're not doing it properly. Mm, good shout. So that's number five. And then number six is a big one. Number six is being scared to fail, be wrong, or look bad in, in public, right? So being scared to fail, be wrong, or look bad in public. So you often hear people talk about, you know, it's fear of failure, fear of failure. And I think, uh, although there's some truth in that statement, I think, I think for me, it's, it's not, people don't necessarily have a fear of failure or fear of looking silly. They have a fear of that happening publicly. So, you know, it's a small example, if you're walking down the stairs and your house no one's in and you trip up the first step, you know, you, you probably feel no embarrassment, you probably feel no, you know, you probably don't feel anything, probably even think about it. Versus if you do that in a busy shopping uh, centre or shopping mall and it happens and people see you, you feel, again, again, this feeling comes up and I think it's the same for business as well. In order to promote, market, sell your services, you need to put yourself out there. Like you, you need to publicly... Uh, spring from the rooftops how big you believe your services is your services do everything in your power to get your service or the, or, or, or the concept of your service in front of your uh, ideal prospects hiring managers hiring leaders in, in, in your market but people hold back because they're scared of how it might look so they're scared of people criticizing them they're scared of um you know not not getting the response they want lots of things right they're scared of rejection um you know you speak every day i feel like i speak to someone who knows the importance of content on social media won't put the content on social media not because they think it won't work but it's because they're, they're scared that no one will engage with it and they're sort of in this cycle of you know they're not they're not they're scared no one engage with the content therefore they don't do they don't do content and therefore no one engages with the content they don't do and they, they never get the results they want and but you see sort of fear scared to be wrong and, and scared to look bad in public holding people back all over the place and it, again it all links back to Ego. Terry, anything you add to that? Yeah, the, the, what, what I'd add to that is this fear of criticism. Um, I'm not going to put that out there because, as Drew says, I, I might look bad, or somebody might have a have a go at me on on a on a, on a platform in, in public. And you want to think about that. Um, you're you're restricting your success because some troll or idiot or somebody who who doesn't know any better may criticise you. So your life is being governed by somebody that you don't probably don't even know and you will never ever meet. And so you're saying, I'm not gonna do that. You, you really wanna think about that. 
And also ask yourself this question. If not you, but your competitor does it, what's the implications for you and your business? If your ego keeps saying, no, no, don't do that. Let me protect you. Don't put anything out there. And if you don't put anything out there, you're not going to get any criticism. You're not going to get any inquiries either. Nobody's going to know who you are. So, so don't do that. Your ego goes, I'm doing this to protect you. And somebody else is going, to hell with it. Other people's opinion of me, good or bad, is not going to change my life in terms of um, what, what I'm actually going to do. So I'm just going to get the stuff out there and get and raise my awareness. I'm going to get more potential clients and hiring managers coming to me. Who do you think is going to get the business? But your ego will argue with you and you will argue with it and argue for your limitations that I'm doing this for my own good. That's the, that's the ego. That's the overprotective parents say, no, good heavens, don't do that. You just stay here. You're safe here. And nobody will ever criticise you. Those people that you've never, ever met and probably will never, ever meet, will never, ever, no, you're just not going to get it. I remember years ago, um, a coach we were working with, he used to say, whatever you do, do it and make sure you fail quickly. And he was a big advocate that you, you're never going to get it right first time and kind of understand that. Learn to fail quickly and, then, and that's how you learn. And that was a big, on a personal level, that was a big game changer for me. Was just embracing the failure and go, actually, let's just do it. Fail quickly learn the lessons and move on. Much different to, I'm not going to do this because I'm scared of failing. Yeah, and so just to recap, number one, being complacent in mission. Number two, not asking for help or wanting to figure it out on your own. Number three, being more attached to the how than the what. Four, saying that won't work without you even testing it first. Five, saying that I know that already, but not doing it or not doing it properly. And six, being scared to fail, be wrong or look bad publicly um but we're going to wrap up for today let us know what you, you, you find it useful give us a like give us a comment if you're watching live on facebook that is or watching the replay let us know um we'll be back same time next week with uh, another live stream um right here in, in the group if you're listening anywhere else make sure you join the make more placements community uh, so you can tune in live Jerry, anything to add no, just thank you very much for joining us today we're back we're back every week all these trainers are absolutely free our sole aim is to help you uh, uh, get more business, grow your business, uh, make more placements, earn more money. That's our sole aim. So we, we do these trainings absolutely free of, free of, free of charges. No cost, there's no obligation. If you've got anybody or got any friends or colleagues who you think will find this interesting, please share it with them. We're more than happy to share this with you every week, three o'clock UK time, 10 a.m. Uh, New York time and 4 p.m. Uh, mainland Europe. So until next time, folks, take care. Take action and be relentless.